The Clouds of Northland Thunder by Amory and Dawn. Abbey Road by The Beatles. Billy Talent Free and Dead Silence by Billy Talent. Boston by Boston. The Next Day by David Bowie. Uh, Macara by E.S. Posthumous. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. Um, uh, Tonight by Franz Ferdinand. Uh, American Idiot by Green Day. The Second Law by Muse. No More Shall We Part. And Murder Ballots by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Death of a Bachelor by Panic at the Disco. The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. A Night at the Opera by Queen. Harakari by Serge Tankier. Misery in Solid... Soliquidity by Symbion, Symbion Project. Lonerism by Tame Impala. The Beauty Behind the Madness by The Weeknd. The Blue Album, also titled, self-titled Weezer, by Weezer. And Straight Out of Linwood by Weird Al Yankovic. I was doing so well. I just had to remind myself, did it start off with Linwood or was it something else before Linwood? But I got that in one take and I hope I didn't forget anything. Otherwise, I'm going to have to redo this for the hundredth friggin' time. Anyways, now that I have your attention, <laughs> hopefully, those were my honorable mentions for my most favorite album of all time as of the year 2022. Because who knows, 20, 50 years from now, this list may or may not change. I disqualified any movie soundtrack or score, um, any album that is the greatest hits by an artist because I wanted to do their actual albums as they were released. I also had to have actually listened to the entire album and every song that's on it. If I have not done listened to every song on the album, I can't rate the album. So there are some major famous albums that I can't put on this list because I've never actually listened to the entire album or all the songs on it. So uh, that quite narrowed down this list. Anyways, number 10 is Rush's Moving Pictures album. And this is the uh, 40th anniversary of... Uh, vinyl deluxe edition it's not the huge box version it's just the one with only only the vinyl i don't own a cd of the moving pictures album but i own the digital copy on itunes and i have the entire album on rock band if i had a, a list for like top 10 best albums of all time that i've ever listened to um this would probably rank higher on the list than, but unfortunately there's a couple albums I just love more than this album. My favorite song is, uh, Witch Hunk, Witch, Witch Hunk, Witch Hunk, <laughs> Witch Hunt Part Free of Fear. And I actually think it's a totally underrated song and I love it. Uh, but then again, you got, once again, so many other amazing songs on this album, and I love listening to it. Literally, probably my least favorite song on the album, Vital Signs. It's still a great song. I still like listening to it, but it's just, I don't know, is it just me? Or does it, it just seems like not as powerful or impactful ending of for the album? Like, I might get some, <laughs> I might piss off some Rush fans, but it's just, the, to me, Vital Signs just sort of, like, it's a good song. It's just, and I like it. It's just, you know, compared to every other song on the album, that song just seems like my, my more least favorite of the songs, and it's like, that's what ends off the album. Anyways, going on to my number nine. Now, unfortunately, because I moved... And uh, I'm afraid to unpack everything because uh, I'm still trying to build a Blu-ray shelf or something or figure out what I'm going to do. Um, and that way I don't have to 
keep changing things per se so a lot of my cds and stuff is in boxes and stuff well not my cds specifically but certain books and whatnot and i have this album on uh it's like a digi book and it's like it's a bit bigger than the like it would be closer probably to a imagine a blu-ray digi book but dvd size <laughs> that's probably the more accurate way of 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 uh from what I remember what it looked like. And this is uh, 21st Century Breakdown by Green Day. And I'm going to be completely 100% honest. This was a tough decision between American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown. Because I would honestly say... American Idiot is the better album, but I realized this is not the best albums I'm counting down. This is my most favorite albums. And if Green Day never did 21st Century Breakdown, I would have probably, uh, this pr slot would have been American Idol. American Idol? American Idiot. <laughs> Russia's Moving Pictures was higher on my list, and originally the battle between American Idiot and 21st Century was for the 10th spot. Re-listening, because I a lot of this list I've re-listened to just to confirm its ranking, and re-listening to the 21st Century Breakdown album, I'm not saying it's a better album than Russia's Moving Pictures, I just love the hell out of a lot, if not all, of this album. Though 21 Guns is a lot on the... That was kind of probably the most overplayed song of on that album. But then again, American Idiot kind of had a same similar issue. <laughs> and uh, Know Your Enemy is played at basically every single sporting event ever <laughs> now at this point. If I had to choose... A least favorite song on the album it, it's hard because like for me it's like songs that are overplayed kind of do I tend to like less because it's like oh I've heard this so many times I mean it's a great song but it's like it's either Know Your Enemy or Christian's Inferno don't get me wrong both great songs but here's the thing Christian's Infer Inferno is not uh not overplayed you don't hear that on the radio like ever so it's kind of like it's kind of a toss-up of which one's my more least of the album but i had an even bigger problem with my most favorite song on this album if i had to choose just one i would have to go with restless heart syndrome i'm torn because it's like before the Lobotomy, Peacemaker, Last Night on Earth. Amazing songs. If I had a list of my top 100 favorite songs of all time, those songs would be heavily in, in consideration <laughs> on that list. And that's not even including 21st Century Breakdown, which is awesome. And um, See the Light awesome like this album it's like american idiot may be the better album and i love that album too that's why it made my honorable mention list maybe i just wanted to highlight this album a lot more i i think it's underrated <laughs> I, that might screw up my whole ranking but if you didn't like 21st century breakdown but love american idiot fine you can pretend that's my ninth choice but uh I don't care. I'm, I did this video. I've confirmed 21st Century Breakdown is number nine. You could say number eight is something for everybody. The Devo album that was released, well, when this album came out, it was recent, but well, any album that just came out would be recent. This is a much more newer Devo album compared to where a majority of their major hits come from. And 
this album is an absolute banger from start to finish. I cannot emphasize this enough. And how I first discovered this album was literally Little Big Planet, that series of video games, Little Big Planet uh, um, kart racing game. I forget the specific name, but it, it had kart racing, but it was Little Big Planet themed. And this was one of the songs in it, the title song, or not title song, but the Fresh, which is the starting song on this album. And that song was amazing. I'm like, who does this song? And I found out it was Devo, and I searched up the album. I listened to the album, and I'm like, I love this album. <laughs> when I discovered this album, um, I showed my friend this album and got him to listen to it, and he loved it so much that he's like, you have to get him, find me this album and, and buy it for him. And I did. It's a little bit of toss up between No Place Like Home and March On, but I have to give it to No Place Like Home <laughs> as my most favorite song on this album. Least favorite, once again, another hard choice because they're just all really catchy, really good, really fun to listen to. And I had to go with Cameo, maybe, maybe because it repeats Cameo too much, or the way they repeat it is a little too, not aggressive, but just, it said his name is Cameo, and it's like, Cameo, Cameo, and it's like, I kind of get it, I mean, it's still a good song, I still like listening to it, I love going for the album, I a song had to be chosen for least favorite, you know? Because <laughs> it makes the, the my most favorite stand out even more. From what I heard, they released all the songs on the internet and allowed fans to vote on which songs would make it onto the album. And whatever songs were not, uh, that was left over and didn't make the list, it ended up on... Um, uh, like bonus tracks on the digital version of the album. And uh, I didn't realize that until after I bought the main album. But to be honest, what made this list was the original album. Um, I did buy the bonus tracks on their own on iTunes. And uh, they're good. I still like them. But it doesn't affect the rating that I gave it initially. So... The bonus tracks didn't hurt the album, <laughs> if that's what I'm saying. It didn't make it better. So, there's an album on here where the bonus tracks... There's an album on my list that does the bonus tracks deluxe edition is the version that made it up this high. And uh, we'll come across that when we do. Number seven is Congratulations by MGMT. At this point, you can probably guess I do really like alternative or alternative music. <laughs> alternative rock. Alternative pop. <laughs> if it's alternative and sounds weird, I love it. <laughs> Great and amazing um, um, ocular spectacular or whatever the name of that album is. Congratulations. Oh, when that came out, oh my gosh, I listened to this album. I mean, all these albums on this list I've listened to so many times, but like, this album has what I firmly believe as of right now, because I haven't really ranked or checked it, but it has what I believe is my most favorite song ever made. But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you my least favorite song on this album first. <laughs> And it's not really a song. I did not realize this. I actually thought this was part of the album. But it's called In Betweener. In Between the Liners is what it's called. And it's an iTunes pre-order exclusive song. I did not realize that. <laughs> I actually thought it was the ending song on the album. As far as I knew, my least favorite song on the album, but now I'm like, oh, it's not even on the... Now I'm like, 
I am struggling because I have to come up with a new least favorite song on the album, and it's like, how can I choose? They're all my favorites in a way. But I don't care. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as this. In in between the liners is the worst song of the album. It's not really a song. It's more of just ominous music as they talk, speaking. Um, I don't even know what they're talking about, but they do reference the songs on the album. So I I. I, I think, are they just going through and describing each song or something? Like, like I can't even remember. I haven't listened to that song in ages. But that's my least favorite on the album. My most favorite on the album, and potentially and probably is my most favorite song of all time, is Flash Delirium. I would highly recommend, after this video is finished, to go check out the music video on YouTube for that song because it is weird and wonderful and crazy <laughs> uh, the farther the video gets in. And um, this song, I just, I love it so much. I mean, I love all the other songs on this album as well, except for in between the liners, but it's working. Um, I found a whistle. Congratulations. Um, someone's missing. Song for Dan Tracy. Um, hell, even Lady Dada's Nightmare is is nightmarishly awesome sounding, and the epic Siberian Breaks, which I love. I've listened to that so many times. It's like it. It's kind of like the Beatles Abbey Road, the uh, the Abbey Road melody. It's kind of like that. Only it's track listed as one song. Uh, MGMT also had another song, Metanoia, that does a similar thing. That song is also awesome, but uh, Siberian Breaks is just even better. <laughs> Number six is Weezer's The Red Album Deluxe Edition. Because if this album was not... The, the bonus songs on this album, for me, is what makes this the t one, it, it, this is what makes it this high on this list for one of my favorite albums of all time. And never in the history of albums that I've ever listened to has bonus tracks that are not on the official album, original album, have, were so amazing that they almost they, they elevate the original album to a whole new plane of existence. <laughs> and I had that experience with this album. Uh, I'm so glad when I went to buy this album, I chose the deluxe edition over the, the regular version because I cannot imagine my life missing out on these bonus track songs. <laughs> I may be hyping it up too much. Take a listen for yourself. They are amazing. But the album itself is also... I love, and this album just, oh man. I mean, everyone, everyone acknowledges the Blue Album, and the Blue Album is, is awesome. The Red Album, for me, is like, this is the album that sort of kind of cemented Weezer as one of my favorite bands of all time. Unfortunately, all the other albums that came after it um, were nowhere near this level, um, the, but... That's not putting a diss on their the rest of their newer uh, discography. I just love this album so much, and I don't think anything could ever top it. And uh, I'm so glad some of these songs are on Rock Band, Troublemaker, uh, Pork and Beans, which, I mean, I think everybody heard at this point. Anyone who's been on the internet has probably heard Pork and Beans. The Greatest Man That Ever Lived. That... Oh, is my, would be my most favorite song on the album, if it wasn't for the deluxe edition bonus tracks, um, but we'll get to that, uh, but The Greatest Man That Ever Lived, oh my gosh, it's like, this is the, this is the part of the list we're going down, it's like, I know these songs so much, <laughs> I've listened to them so much, as long as I have the music cues, I can, I can sing lyrically these songs and uh, I'm not I'm not bragging or anything I'm just saying that I may be the greatest man that ever lived um <laughs> I'm just kidding my least favorite 
song on the album. Um, honestly, it's uh, everybody get dangerous. To me, everybody gets dangerous. It's just album. It just there's nothing special about the song. I felt like it just felt like it didn't even felt stereotypically Weezer. It just felt like a stereotypical song, like very not as memorable and it doesn't really stick out as much. It's kind of just there, but oh my gosh, the most songs I love. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned a couple of the other ones already, but, um, uh, you know, dreaming the angel and the one cold, dark world. Oh my gosh. Back then when this album came out. Oh my god. I was just so into it. <laughs> Soundtrack of my high school. I guess 2008. Oh my god. 2008. Jesus. That would be. I would be in middle school going on high school. Holy crap. I have to now acknowledge it. But the bonus tracks. Miss Weenie. Is the most okay of all the bonus tracks like it's uh, it's a good song i love it joy belting it out miss weenie but the next three songs after that are just um, masterpieces of songs um of emotion a roller roller coaster of emotion okay starting off with peg and it's such a simple song too and the fact, oh, it's just, oh, and then, and then the spider, emotional, this is emo, <laughs> oh my gosh, the emotional of the song, and then, and then ending it off with, I mean, this, this song could potentially knock out Flash Delirium for one of my favorite songs of all time, and it is King by Weezer and is my most favorite song on this album and I would highly recommend number five like a majority of Muse's filmography unfortunately I only have it on iTunes I actually haven't bought a single Muse CD yet but Muse is my most favorite band of all time I bought recently my very first vinyl for Muse, and I, I kind of, Muse is the band where it's like, if there's one band I want to get vinyl of everything, it's Muse. <laughs> and so that's going to be a long, long, long term goal <laughs> over time. One of my favorite albums of all time, number five, is The Resistance. Once again, this is around the time where I'm growing up, high school. This is like hitting <laughs> this album. Mm, it's me. <laughs> this uh, album is so epic. I love it dearly. Ever since I remember when I first heard Uprising on the radio. And it was my first time ever hearing Muse on the radio. And up until that point, it's like, yeah, I, I was familiar with the work and I love them. But then it's like hearing it on the radio, I'm like, oh, Muse must have a new album. And then it's like, I researched the, the Resistance album. And then from there, it's like, oh, so good. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, how do I describe really good music without actually playing any of the music? Resistance, epic. Epic. Undisclosed Desires is epic. United States of Eurasia, epic. <laughs> Guiding Light, epic. <laughs> Unnatural Selection, epic. <laughs> MK Ultra, epic. <laughs> I belong to you. I cannot pronounce the rest of it because I think it's some sort of French. Epic. The three part sympathy, sympathy, symphony of part one overture, uh, cross pollination, and 
part three, which is redemption. Epic. <laughs> it's like it's like Muses twenty one twelve, like only it's their their equivalent of it and. This album is actually inspired me so much that there's actually, as me wanting to become a film director, um, I've had an idea for a story that I really wanted to do, uh, but I haven't been able to do it because, well, probably it would be the, it's literally probably would be the most expensive and most ambitious thing I have ever wanted to create ever. And it's the kind of thing where it's like, this would be the one project I would love to put all my eggs in one basket for. And I would need to actually, you know, start making my name in the film industry and to slowly get up to that level to be able to pull this off. And this album is a very, very big influence on that piece of work that I want to work on. And I've had the idea floating around since high school. Ironically, it was kind of in the same... <laughs> sort of collided together. Who inspired who, you know? <laughs> if you want something epic, look no further than Muse. And the album they did afterwards, The Second Law, I love as well. I kind of feel like that's like a part two to the Resistance album. Because uh, they kind of go hand in hand in a bit. I love that album too, but it's an honorable mention. Number four. The first album I have ever bought. This album will always have a special place in my heart. And that is All American Rejects Move Along. Move Along was a, is a big song. Move Along was the reason I went out and bought this album. One song. And I was like, because I always heard it on the radio now and then, and every time it came on the radio, I was like losing my shit. I was like, oh, I love this song. I love this song so much. So I had to check out the rest of the album. I had to go buy it. I had to track down who the artist was. That took a bit because on the radio, they it's very rare that they would say, oh, and uh, that was uh, All American Rejects you just heard. And internet was early stages that uh, I was young <laughs> and I didn't clue in. I'm like, oh, I could just Google what I need to know. I'll be like, describe the song. Um, I didn't clue into that stage immediately so it took me a long time to find out <laughs> but eventually i i was able to track down the song the artist and then the album i immediately ran out to walmart because where else am i gonna buy an album being a kid that's in because this is what 2005 move along is my favorite song on the album but there is a bunch of songs on here that could very easily match it in terms of, of favoritism um you know can't take it uh straight jacket feeling uh <laughs> stab my back dirty little secret it's it ends tonight that is oh man i love these love these songs so much it, it's kind of funny because my least favorite song on the album in my opinion was uh yeah it's night drive right I remember it being in a Cars video game, and Cars is, we're talking about Pixar's Cars, uh, they did a PlayStation 2 video game, and this song was on the soundtrack, and um, this song kind of always annoyed me, like, growing up when I was listening to this album, because I didn't like the way it sounded, it sounded weird, especially when everything was like, if you listen to the song, I think you can sense what I mean by it because of the way they overlapped things and then put things together to me it did not sound good or right <laughs> but when I got older much older um re-listening to the song I'm like I actually really like this song as well but it's still probably my least favorite song on the album before I get into my just 
fucking smash the disc against the chair that's literally right in front of me. <laughs> Before we move along to our top three favorite albums of all time, well, not ours, my top three favorite albums of all time as of 2022, I just want to say thank you very much for watching up to this point of the video. I really appreciate if you uh, drop a like and uh, maybe even subscribe because I'm trying to do as much vary uh, or variant of variant of content, a variety of content, and um, I'm trying to not too too much of the same thing. I'm currently addicted to Genshin Impact, so please ignore the many live streams of that unless you want to you know check them out, but. Um, I try to do content related to movies, games, and music, and, uh, shows and whatever. And so, the only thing I can guarantee is it will revolve around me. So, thank you again. Number three! Dun 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 in the Court of the Crimson King. An observation by King Crimson. I don't think that's the title of the original album, uh, but this is the title of the, was this, is this 40th as well? This is 40th anniversary of this album. And uh, this is not vinyl, this is uh, CDs. It's, um, it's like six, no, five CDs and a DVD. And um, I love this album. I discovered this album in high school. I'm trying to think what happened first, how I discovered this album, because I know on one of the later Guitar Hero games, uh, this was a song you unlock. 21st Century Skizhnoi Man. And I think that might have been the first time I've ever heard the song. And then from there, I researched the album. Or if there was something, um, if there was a way I organically came across this album. Either way, I love this album so much. This I consider one of the best albums ever made. Top five, if I had to do a best album list. Uh, but it's number three for my favorite. And uh, my favorite song on the album uh, as much as I love The Court of the Crimson King, um, I have to go to my epitaph. Epitaph. Um, if I'm saying that correctly. Oh, I love that song. And uh, and that's not to knock any of the other songs on the album. 21st Century Scheduling Man is completely crazy. My least favorite song is Moonchild. Um, but I still love that song as well. I just find the part where it really spaces out um, for like the rest of the track. I think it's like around the three minute mark onwards. It's just ominous and just sort of, it almost sounds random. Like it's just the band just fooling around. It kind of sounds like in a sense. <laughs> it To me, it's my least favorite of the al uh, album, like song wise, um, listening to. And um, I do, I, I am referring to the original album. This is the, this one, disc one, has not only the original songs, but it also has a lot of bonus songs attached to the CDs and whatnot. So I'm not entirely sure. I can guess what the original album was, which is the five songs. I Talk to the Wind is the only song that I haven't mentioned at this point, which is also I love. Uh, this is the only... King Crimson album I've listened to uh, from beginning to end and I've listened to all the songs on it. I really want to dive into the rest of their discography, um, uh, especially after hearing on GTA 5, which is a video game, Poseidon 1 or The Wake of Poseidon or something like that, um, because that's on the radio in GTA 5. And I always love switching to the channel just to hear that one song. Uh, and uh, I definitely really want to check out the rest of their works. But this album, oh, I love. Number two is Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. And I'm going to be honest. Between this album and Court of the Crimson King, it, 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 was, it was almost 
like I was battling of which one deserves a more higher spot favorite wise. And uh, I'm going to be honest, my number one pick was an album I totally overlooked. An album that I wasn't expecting, like I, I totally forgot about when I was doing this list until like several weeks after I did the initial list and was like, okay, this is finalized. Um, I then was like, wait a minute, I totally forgot that album. So, and that kind of pushed everything downwards by one. And so initially, it was a battle between Random Access Memories and Court of the Crimson King for my number one spot for most favorite albums of all time. These were two albums that made a really big impact in the terms of just when I think of best albums ever made or albums that I love so much, those two always immediately come to mind. And so I'm trying to think what exactly kind of pushed out... Court of the Crimson King, but Random Acts of Memories from beginning to end, I love. It's just got to be on a technical level of what, to be fair, what King Crimson did in 1960s is almost ahead of its time in a sense. <laughs> Musically, I don't know because I haven't listened to every, every music and song that was in the 60s. This album is like... It's the sound of the 60s, the 70s, and a sound of the future. And I've always liked that line, which is incorporated into this album. Um, I just, it kind of, it feels like it's an ode to the older stuff, but being futuristic about it. It's unfortunate. My least favorite song on the album is Get Lucky. And the only reason is because they overplayed it so much. There were so many great and amazing album or songs on this album. And the fact that Get Lucky got basically pushed into the ground, in a sense. <laughs> as amazing of a song it is, which it is. I don't even have to... <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about when I say Get Lucky. Because you're up all night to get lucky. Okay, no... Let's not repeat the song ever again. Um, still a great song. Still love listening to it. But every time it comes across in the al on the album, I'm just like, damn, they really ruined the song. And it, I'm just surprised uh, because there's a couple songs on here like um, Give Life Back to Music, game, The Game of Love. Uh, there's songs on here that are like, these could very easily have been played on the radio with Get Lucky. Uh, because obviously they're not going to play Touch or um, uh, Giorgio by Mori Morio. Oh my gosh, I can't say his name. That song has become a meme. Um, I don't know if it was recent, but in the last couple years I've been seeing it a lot more. That's my probably my favorite song on the album. It's just epic. And um, if you don't know who the guy is that's talking... Uh, that is the guy who did the soundtrack to Scarface, the Brian De Palma version. Um, as well, he's done a various other soundtracks as well as music career wise. And so it's kind of this song is kind of like an ode to his work as well as Daft Punk being Daft Punk. And it is an absolute banger and crazy. The drums, the guitar, bass, everything like instrument wise. Uh, this album, when it goes crazy, it goes crazy. And I'm referring to the DiGiorgio and the uh, Contact, the last song on the album. This almost, this has a lot of guest stars as well. Um, like, for example, Touch has Paul Williams. And for those of you who don't know who Paul Williams is, uh, he was the uh, in The Phantom of the Paradise he had a cameo in Baby Driver. He is a really great musician. I, I love the sound. He did the soundtrack to Phantom of the Paradise. I love the soundtrack to Phantom of the Paradise. But this is not a best album or favorite albums that's uh, that's movie based. <laughs> that's that's another list for another time. Oh, Instant Crush, Within. Oh. 
I just want to listen to these songs right now. It's just like I'm just imagining in my head the songs, and I'm like, I want to listen to it right here, right now. I can't because I'm still recording this video. My number one most favorite album of all time. Shocked how long it took me to realize not only was this a contender, but this was and still is my favorite album of all time as of this year. Billy Talent 2. I wonder if this sort of says... <laughs> This kind of says a lot about me because this kind of shows what, what era I sort of grew up on. <laughs> and it's a Canadian band too, so that's a bonus right there. Me being from Canada and uh, actually living in Mississauga, which is where Billy Talent uh, formed. Billy Talent 2 is an absolutely amazing, a perfect album. Rock, alternative rock album. Is it alt is Billy Talent considered alternative? Are they emo rock? I'm not sure the classification, but I don't care because I love all these songs. I know them all off my heart, and uh, oh my gosh, not a single song on here, not a single single song on here I would consider weak. This is a perfection album, in a sense. Uh, granted, Red Flag was a little bit overplayed, especially in a lot of middle school uh, <laughs> dances. Fallen Leaves is a, 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 such a catchy hit. Um, but like, all these songs are amazing. I love them. But if I had to choose a weaker, or not weaker, but least favorite song. Damn, I, that's, I can't. I can't. Yeah, no, maybe it is Red Flag. Just because they, they played it a little too much. But my most favorite song on the album, I have to go with the Navy song. Uh, honestly, every time I put that song on, the guitar, it just, oh, that riff. The majority of these songs, I would love to learn guitar <laughs> wise. Just like, Billy Talent is such a cool band. Such an amazing band. And uh, you'll notice in my honorable mentions, not only is Billy Talent 2 one of my favorite albums of all time, which is actually number one, uh, Billy Talent Free and Dead Silence, I could not decide, I could not decide which one, because I tried to be very strict on my honorable mentions, and I couldn't place one off the list, because I'm like, I love Billy Talent Free, and I love Dead Silence. They are both amazing albums. But this album is just, well, 10 spots above it in the terms of favorite. I highly recommend to check out some, if not all, of these albums. Or uh, if you've never heard of these bands, uh, any of the bands I mentioned or albums, uh, maybe check them out, check out a couple songs. Don't judge an entire album on one song. I want you to have a nice day or night or whatever time you want this. Have a nice whenever. Check out my other stuff. It should be somewhere on screen right now. Some of my other videos. One of these is my 300 subscriber part one video. Um, but as you can see, it's drastically different from this video. Yeah, no, I, I am starting to think I do too much anime content and Genshin Impact is definitely not helping.